Okay, good morning everybody. It is Monday, June the 5th. I'm Lana Harris. This is the First Alert Desk and we're doing something a little different. We're talking about the stories that you hear other people talking about and you can't believe you missed it. Yeah, this is in case you missed it. I want to make sure you're on top of the stories that are interesting happening in the world around you. So we're going to dive in with the thing that your kid is going to be asking for for Christmas. I don't know if that's this year. I don't know if that's next year. I don't know when this is, but it's having to do with Apple, of course. Uh, look at that, VR, that's what they're getting into. This is the newest, biggest product launch since the Apple Watch. They're gonna unveil it today at its annual developer event. It's really a mixed reality headset, so it's expected to offer both virtual reality and augmented reality, which is basically just a technology that overlays virtual images over live video of the real world. So here's why your kid may not actually get this at Christmas or until he or she has their own job. The company is reportedly considering a $3,000 price tag for this. Who has $3,000 for a piece of technology? I don't know, but be my friend if you do, because I would love to play on it because I don't have those funds. So that'll be really interesting when it's unveiled. We'll be able to show you what that looks like, and we can do that on AtlantaNewsFirst.com. And of course, a quick search of Apple's products will get you there as well. Okay, moving right on along. This one is kind of just scary. I don't know. I think I'd be scared if this was me in this situation. This has to do with a diver who was in Oklahoma. He found a live grenade while he was exploring underwater. So here's what it looks like. And okay, it was a tear gas grenade, but the diver thought it was a bomb at the time. You wouldn't know what that was, right? I'm sure he didn't investigate it too closely to figure it out. So authorities in Love County say it was a live CS or tear gas grenade canister in Lake Murray. The Army describes it as a riot control hand grenade. So maybe you've heard it described as that. So the diver did report it. The Oklahoma Highway Patrol bomb squad was called out to the lake and they did find it. They took it off site to detonate it safely. And get this, they were actually able to date that grenade to somewhere around the early 2000s. So that's a about when it was made. Who knows how long it was actually out there, but how fascinating is that? And how fascinating is this? If you use Venmo, if you use PayPal, Cash App, things like that, which at this point, who doesn't, right? Um, you're being warned right now that your money is at risk, especially if you keep it in there. So the federal regulators say you might want to move it out if it's in there right now. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau director says that more people really are using apps like these, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, to keep their money on. Some even have their paychecks directly deposited to these apps these days. And the problem is, unlike traditional banks, these platforms aren't insured by the federal government. So if these apps go under, there's really nothing you can do. The money would just be gone. So if you have all your money, if you have your deposits put into those apps. Yeah, you're suggested, advised to go to a traditional bank. Even if that sounds kind of scary, kind of sounds a bit scarier to me to have all your money just gone if that company goes under. Okay, this one actually made us laugh this morning on the news. So teens are coming up with a revolutionary new idea to stop spending so much time on their smartphone and instead using a dumb phone or just the kind of phones that we used growing up. You know, the old ones, the flip phones, the ones that don't have all the bells and whistles on that. So I could kind of sum up what's going on here, but I thought it was a lot more interesting for you to hear it from them. Is going dumb the new way to get smart? So-called dumb phones, that is. Why my friends and I only take our flip phones out? Gen Zers like Sammy Palazzolo have been forging a path away from the constant connection of smartphones in search of a digital detox. We realize that every single problem that we have on a night out, everything that leads to us crying, everything that leads to us having a bad hookup, everything that leads to us having a bad time, 
stems from our phone. Smartphones still dominate the mobile phone market, but mobile tech companies are reporting a rise in sales in the U.S. for their most basic models, thanks to Gen Z. The young people themselves are kind of self-censoring and saying, I don't really need the negative mental health and social harms that come with an always connected life. The flip back to what are called feature phones, good for just a quick call or basic texting, comes as the U.S. Surgeon General issued a new advisory warning of the mental health effects that social media and too much screen time are having on young people. We know, for example, that when teens are using more than three hours a day of social media, they're facing double the risk of depression and anxiety symptoms. Young or not as young. Experts say people trying to unplug don't need to take an all or nothing approach. Turn off notifications, put the phone on do not disturb, even change the color to grayscale to make using the screen less exciting. Jared Hill, CBS News. I love that the teens have come up with this idea of not using their smartphone as much. Adults have been saying that for quite some time, for years now, that they should get off the phones, but I'm glad they got there themselves and that they're regulating it because it really is uh, hard on their mental health when they're on it all the time and seeing so much negative stuff out there. Okay, you might have noticed I was playing the wrong video when that started and I gave away the surprise. This is the sweetest story. It is going to put a smile on your face. Okay, look at this. So an Illinois middle schooler with no means of transportation got a really big surprise from this NFL player. That's what you're seeing happen on your screen right now. He's 14 years old. His name is Xavier Jones. He had to walk two hours to get to his eighth grade graduation. Now, maybe you heard of that story. I think I heard of that over the weekend. His grandfather's car had gone out just before the grandson's special day. So that part is new. I also didn't know the grandfather is disabled and he's been taking care of Xavier who has sickle cell anemia and his six siblings after their mother passed away. So again, he was about to graduate, didn't have a way to get there, so he walked two hours. So Miami Dolphins player Teron Armstead learned about what happened to Xavier and surprised the teen with a $5,000 electric bike. Grandpa got a $40,000 minivan. He really blessed this family. It was incredible. They always say the news doesn't give you something positive. That really almost gave me chills this morning. It was so cool. Love that for them. Love when good people help good people. Do something kind for somebody today. And that does it for me. Here is a look at your forecast. It's just a beautiful day outside. Yeah, it's not a look at your forecast. It's really just a live look at the city. Lots of clouds out there. Bit of a gloomy day, but... uh. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to have a full report coming up at Atlanta News First at noon. And until then, have a fantastic day.